And here we go. Hello, everyone. So this is the uh, first time of us doing, uh, I guess you can say, an official podcast. Um, for those of you who probably do know us, um, and those of you who are going to be viewing this for the first time that don't know us, my name is Josh. This is my partner, Rachel, and she's just going to yell at me if I don't call her my girlfriend either. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm already smiling. See, I'm already ahead of the game on this one. I was about to say, because I was about to call you out, because I was like, can we stop calling me just your partner? <laughs> because like people don't understand that people are thinking business partner and not just like it is business partner it is but like also life partner but like people don't put two and two together when we're doing a business yeah whatever anyways so we um <laughs> kind of decided to just do a uh, pod. it was actually kind of my idea to do a podcast so but uh I, you know I, I see a lot of things going on in social media and i was just like hey you know what this looks kind of like a lot of fun so uh Let's give it a shot. So here we are. Bought the equipment. But we also just talk and ramble to each other. All the time. All the time. So why not just record it and see if what we're talking about helps anybody else? As far as, you know, getting interest and whatever, because, uh, you know, we go out to the bars all the time and we talk to people all the time. And it's just like, we just sit there and ramble all day long. Why not record it? But yeah. So um, I'm still adjusting to the whole using a mic in front of my face because I keep hitting it. Yeah, I'd, I'd go up a little bit higher. But uh, so we were we were contemplating. Ooh. I made like a a, a Ooh, bunch of. <laughs> Already fucking Better? up. Yeah, no, okay. I, I could still hear you. <laughs> it was just angled. So um, I we we've, we've been contemplating going back and forth on like what to start for a conversation because we're like, oh, like you know, we want to set things up and stuff like that. But uh, I made like a list of like fifty different things. So we're gonna. And I'm kind of going down the list, um, but um, I'm gonna be random for a second because I just looked over and saw it. I'm wearing my Harley sweatshirt, and you're wearing your Harley shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even planned. that. That wasn't planned, but <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Um, so yeah, they. Uh, I don't know what's what's the first thing you want to talk about. Um, ow! Trying not to poke myself in the eye. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's a good one, but yeah, no, let's what are a little something better than that. Um, why don't we talk about what we do best and what we do the most? Talking, <laughs> line dancing. Ah, line dancing. Okay, I like that. Since it is so big, it's up and coming more now than it has been in the past like twenty years. Yes, because it's always been a big thing, but now. Uh, especially with social media because let's face it the world's kind of run by social media which uh it, it especially with like tiktok now like tiktok has just blown the fuck up and everyone especially our generation um and, the younger and especially the younger generation uh everyone's getting into it everyone wants to learn how to dance everyone wants to you know create their own dances now and stuff like that which I mean, there, that can be a whole topic for another day where everyone thinks they're a choreographer and they're not. And it's making too many dances at the minimal quality. Yeah. So but that's that's kind of a whole nother subject we can talk about. But uh, getting into just line dancing and uh, the world of line dancing, I guess we can call it. Um, so I've been da line dancing for for years. Uh, I, I don't like to brag about it. I, I know Rachel will do all the bragging for me. But I uh, I originally started uh, when I turned 21. Um, it, it was kind of uh, I, I was the only one of age uh, at the time. And I was just like, hey, like, where can we go? And legal drinking age, not like, like of like a different type of age. Right. Le actual <laughs> legal drinking age. And uh, I, I wanted to go out to my first bar because like, you know, I'm 21. I've never been to a bar. And um I got all excited. I was just like, you know, this is awesome. I actually get to legally walk into a bar and um, it all my friends were under 21, like 18, 19, 20, whatever. And I was just like, where the fuck can I go by myself? Like, I don't want to go by myself. This is my first time in a bar. So my friend who um, his mother, when like I used to be like basically best friends with the uh, kid years ago. And they're like, oh, well, where uh, I, I have an idea of where to go. And I'm like. OK, and she's like, it's I, I I can't remember exactly if she knew what the age limit was, but I'm pretty sure I, I'm you pretty told sure me, you told I, me I, she said 18. I, I think it was like 18 plus at the time. 
uh, down the road, we ended up finding it was like 16 plus. I don't know if it yeah. changed after a couple of years or whatever. But anyway, we uh, ended up we're like, yeah, let's go to the bar. And we found out it was like a uh, I guess you can call it what we thought was like a country western bar. It was just a, a country bar. And uh, we ended up, you know, I ended up dressing up in a cowboy hat. I had like the nice button up shirt. Like I, I went to the nines dressing like a like a full straight cowboy. My friend had uh, like an old pair of like snakeskin boots. My first pair was snakeskin boots, believe it or not. And uh, he could just like, gave them to me for free because they were just in his barn and he, they, wasn't, using he wasn't using them. And uh, I found him. I was like, hey, can I just wear these? And yeah, and we, we ended up wearing his boots, got all dressed up and uh, we just went to the bar. And uh, turns out it was country line dancing. And I was just like, what the fuck is this? I guess like looking back at it, you can't we can't just call it country line dancing. It's it's line dancing because it's not just country. The terminology, the old school terminology is country line dancing. Yes, a lot of that has changed. And I, 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 am, I'm, I have very mixed feelings about it because. Oh, I, I, I I love the music that they're teaching dances to because they're fun. And they're 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 upbeat and, up and they're way faster. But it's not country music anymore. It's it, it basically went from being when I first started. Uh, I, I, honestly, I don't even really remember any of it being hip hop when I first started. It may I mean, maybe like sure, a couple. Yeah, probably right. I don't I don't remember, but I don't think that song is that old as gotcha. far as a dance goes. So putting into perspective for the people who don't know Josh and I from Adam, I started line dancing just over two years ago. So my experience line dancing starting off and his experience line dancing starting off are very different. Like I came in when they had already started some of the poppy songs and like the first dance that I learned, which we'll get into it, but it's um, the first dance I learned was Asi, but I learned it to 1985 by Bowling for Soup, where I think when you first learned it, it was probably to beat of the music, right? I think so. Yeah. So like I learned it to a non-country song because of the type of bars that I was learning at versus I learned it to a country song at so. a country bar. He learned it to a country song, but now they're mixing in all the non country aspects of it. So basically from as far as I can remember, uh, it was like 75, probably even 80% country and like 20 to 25% hip hop and like a little bit of rock. And now it has completely flip flopped yeah. because it went from slowly going to 50 50. And now the bar, like, I don't know. I, I feel like it's more like 75 25. Like there's way even, more hip hop. I think what's what bothers me the most is I've even noticed myself that I'm not dancing as much as I used to because I'm not interested in dancing to the non country versions of the country songs. So like they'll, they'll and that's, take a country and that's, song and they'll change it. They'll put the EDM, the remix version of it on and it changes the whole beat of the dance. It changes the dance. And I'm loot. I'm not saying I'm losing the love of line dancing because I still love doing it. I do, which is why we teach it. It's just not the same, but anymore. it's not the same. Like my Friday nights are not the same anymore. And I'm kind of, kind of a little heartbroken about it yeah um, i mean i've even talked to some of like the old school regulars and they're like it's this it's not the same anymore it's all all the new shit is all turning into hip-hop and yeah it's like they the, that's what the new generation wants un unfortunately and and, don't, and like you said don't get us wrong we love it both but, but I, I, I would like, I way like prefer to the roots. Yeah, exactly. I, I want to I prefer to stick with more country than it is hip hop. Blame it all on my roots. <laughs> I showed up in boots. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, well, you know, to, to start off, we were instructors ourselves. We uh, we just uh, started instructing well, at this point. Like, it's uh, oh, yeah. Like, what was, what's it been like eight months ago? We started in July. Yeah. So we can have. Uh, here is our sign. You can see it. Yeah. Back here. I'll put it over there. And uh, so yeah, we we start instructing this past July. Can you so see that? so July. Not really. Twenty twenty three, and uh, we've been 
trying to make it a point. I think the bottle of wine's on the way there, dear. And uh, we've been trying to make it a point to bring back more of the country uh, music uh, aspect of it. That's and uh, yes, of course, we throw in hip hop, we throw in rock, and but we try to keep it. I don't want to say to the minimal, but like not as much. We probably do 75 country, 25 percent pop. I, I would agree. Where right now. I don't want to say all bars because we go to one specifically, um, but from what we have heard through the grapevine of other people. No, we've gone to in, we've gone to other bars and they kind of did the same but thing. Not as much. We've, we've got <sighs> regularly we go to one bar. So being able to put our two cents in for other bars outside of our area is hard to say, but knowing that there is, let me see. So what I'm trying to say is like, I've listened to other instructors and people who have been line dancing for a while, like on TikTok talking about it on Facebook reels, like Instagram. Oh yeah. It's, it's it's becoming a thing, a thing. And, it's actually becoming people are starting to actually get upset about it, be frustrated and upset about it because it's also changing what is called dance etiquette. Unfortunately, um, it's becoming so popular so fast that people aren't learning the etiquette to the dance floor. So for those of you who are new to line dancing or don't even know what line dancing is, don't even know it exists, whatever the case is, let me just kind of teach you something. So dance etiquette is basically the definition of etiquette, because I had to kind of make sure I, when I looked it up, I could kind of explain it. It is a unwritten rule that everyone knows about. So dance etiquette is basically an unwritten rule in the dance world that everyone I should. I think shouldn't. etiquette is written down. Is it written down? Yeah. It's like it's it's written and unwritten rule. So it's like the way okay. you're supposed to act in a certain setting. Regardless. So dance etiquette, if you will, would basically being th the biggest thing is having respect for the floor, for everyone on the floor and knowing what's knowing, knowing like your limits on what to do and what not to do. Knowing Having your spatial awareness. Yes. So it's giving yourself space, giving the person next to you space. If you're trying to learn a dance, you're not like up their right ass, up, right, right up on their back because you're not going to. You're if you're that close to someone, you're trying to learn what they're doing. You're not going to be able to see what they're doing because you're so close. This is the one aspect of life where it is not weird to be looking at someone's feet. <laughs> yeah, literally. Like, you want to watch their boots, like they're so like our shirts when we're instructing, they say "follow my boots" because that's just. We want, we're, we're there to teach and we want to show you who the instructors are, which brings me to the our next thing is that if you are new to line dancing and you have little to no experience, we don't care at all. We, especially with us, we love new people. We want to teach people. We're always trying to look for new people. And most people who have been in the line, dan in line dancing for a while and have been a part of the line dancing family, line dancing community, we all love new people and a majority of people will try to help. But, but there's such thing, which is getting very little of nowadays, is called common sense. And what I mean by that is if you're new and it, you're doing a hard song or you don't know what the song is and you're like, OK, like I'm just going to hop in. Don't fucking do that. Do not do that because you're going to piss everyone else off that is already on the floor that already knows a dance. Mm -hmm. So you wait for the dance to go. Wait one or two walls because yes, these watch the, the, it from the sidelines. Watch, watch it, watch it from the sidelines. Watch it from a distance. If you got to get a little bit on the floor because like there's people in the way, that's fine, whatever. But like do it, do it from a distance. If you see now, you can see how challenging the song is. If it's something that's easy, cool, hop in. If it's something that's hard, cool, pop in. We don't care. But if you're gonna hop in the middle of the fucking dance floor and you have no idea what you're doing, oh, that drives us nuts. Absolutely um, if you nuts. Can't tell, uh... He gets a little passionate about this because he's uh, walked into someone multiple, multiple times, people, multiple times, walked into, kicked into people, or had people push me. Walk oh, into him. my God. Um, so he's a little, little bit maybe overpassionate about this. Just 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 a, touch. Just, just just a tad. Just just a touch. Um, 
So if you have sensitive ears and you don't like swearing, I recommend changing your podcast. Now. <laughs> yeah, we we have no filters on this. I'm sorry. But yeah, no, it, it's so dance. One of the things with dance etiquette is knowing your boundaries, knowing where to stand, knowing who to even learn from, because honestly, some people don't even want to teach you. And, and some people don't know it well enough to teach you and they're not comfortable teaching. And then you get the other people who don't even do the dance correctly, but because they add their own flair. Now, adding your own flair is basically you're doing the dance probably, we'll say 75% correctly. And then they do extra moves that can go with the dance, but they're not how it's It's not written. how the step sheet's are written. Which so is- we'll go into on a future day, like how to read a step sheet and how to write a step sheet because writing a step sheet is a whole different beast. And if you can't write a step sheet, you cannot chore- choreograph like you can't do it or ask for help, um, which and, has and, been a lot of the problem lately with a lot not, of dances. coming. We're in. not pros Can with that either. Can you stop <laughs> over talking? <laughs> Go ahead. Am I allowed to get two words in? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. He's a pain in my ass. I try. Um, So... What I was saying <laughs> after once I was rudely interrupted. I'll take a sip and shut up. Yeah, there you go. See, this is what I wish I could just turn your mic off like I can when we're teaching. You can't read shit. Try me. <laughs> um, Actually, I can. Your plug's right here. Ah, shit. <gasps> I can just hit mute. Yeah, yeah, you can. I can. Yep. Um, So what I was trying to get at was we choreography is something special right you have to know what you're doing the steps that you're doing that was weird um sorry something flashed across the screen and i am now realizing that i have a very bad habit of looking at the computer and not the actual camera so this whole podcast josh might have to just toss because i'm looking this way and not there <laughs> like i said this is practice um so let me turn that's 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 why that's why body. i'm facing this way because i can look at you and i can look at the camera and so. then i can look at you and then i can look at the camera so face the fucking camera or face me not the computer <laughs> You're so, not talking to the goddamn computer. You're talking to the fucking people watching it or, so, or me or you. So future point, we're going to get a wireless mic that we can attach to the computer so that we can access the stop and record button from a mic or a, like a, a mouse. mouse. Did I say mic? You said mic. I'm like, mouse. Mike, I'm like, you got a big fucking mic right here. Why no, do you need another the wireless mic? Mouse so oh, I, re- I realize what you said after. Like, move that away, away. So I'm not staring at we're, it. We're practicing. Sorry. We're going to get better. <laughs> so I think what, um, since dating this one, mind you, <laughs> I think I have started to realize I do have a form of ADHD, just maybe not as strong as him, but like enough where like this distracts me. So maybe you need to like put it up or down so you're not paying attention to it. I was tempted to put it down, but then you can't see anything or play with it. So yeah, which is what I'm saying. If we get the wireless mouse, it'll yeah. Okay, so back to what we were talking about with the line dancing, though. Sorry, squirrel. (laughs) Um. (laughs) Welcome to my life. (laughs) At this point, it has become both of our lives. So to get back Um, on track, because I know that she was saying it, we are definitely not. um, I, I never could even pronounce the word. Choreography? Choreographer. 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 Not choreography. We're not choreographers. No, we're not. We've done a couple, but I wouldn't call ourselves professional. No, but I, we, there's a style to writing a step sheet, mind you. And the way I'm learning how to write and read is by going back to the step sheets that are very well known nationwide. So on the couple of step sheets that I have written, because I've, I mean, I've written three. Yeah, and I'm in the process of writing my fourth and fifth. I definitely was not there when she wrote it. I just kind of had all the faith in her and said, go for it. So, but like when I did it, like I was going back to like the older, like other style, other people's choreo, like the step sheets. Mm -hmm. And in all honesty, I was copying and pasting the way they were writing it. 
into our step sheet because I'm like, well, this is how it's been taught before. Like, this is a very well known dance. Like, why, why not use what works, right? So, like, for <laughs> I, I kind of blanked out a little bit because I was playing with the mic. Sorry, <laughs> I, I caught I caught like three quarters of it. So you're good. Okay, um, but. Basically, like, don't change what's not broken, right? So, yeah, like, agreed. use what is available to you instead of being like, I'm going to change the name of a step because it doesn't make sense to me. No. Like. Or you got the opposite where they don't know the name of the step. So and then they write it to something that's like. That you have no idea what the hell they said. Or there are people who don't know the difference between, for instance, I've just saw this the other day on TikTok and it it really bothers me um because it is written correct in the step sheet so someone was doing a demo video on TikTok of the dance fuego and they had the steps like they were saying the steps out while they were doing it um they slowed it down so it was like it wasn't as fast but it's written in the step sheet the last little bit. You do the stomp and hold, like, stomp, hold, sailor, sailor, sit. Oh, no, not that part. They got that part right. It was the kick, kick, coaster. So you get, so at, you're facing 12 o'clock, so like wall one. And then you do, after you finish what's on wall one, you end up facing the back wall. So at six o'clock position, that wall three, mind you. And then you do the three-quarter turn to face your next wall. Sorry if you guys can hear the dogs barking. Um, but you're facing that third-quarter wall. Like, after your three-quarter turn, you're facing your next where you would start your next dance, but we're not there yet. So in this dance, there's a kick forward, kick side, and then there's a coaster step on the right side. And then left foot, it goes kick forward, kick side, coaster step. And that is how it is written in the step sheet. This person that was doing the demo... Like, if you're going to reference a step sheet, follow the step sheet. Don't deviate from the step sheet. It was written that way for a reason. If you're going to deviate from that step sheet, say you're doing it with deviations. Um, but there are a number of step sheets that on the bottom of them, they say, do not deviate from the step sheet. It was written this way for a reason. Um, but so what I was talking about is they were doing. So it's written as a kick, kick, coaster, kick, kick, coaster what this person was doing in her demo and she is well known on TikTok, or maybe she's just popping up on my feed all the time now because I saw the one and it bothered me so much. I don't know because algorithms, but she did a kick, kick, sailor step, kick, kick, sailor step. And yes, they are similar steps, but they are so different at the same time. So the, the one thing that I've noticed talking to uh, other uh, instructors too is that my mind you too bef before i even get into that part um the the problem with other states and you'll understand why i'm saying states is that you have people from okay so we're 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 from massachusetts um you have people from like we'll say hypothetically florida and they have the same song completely different dance or they do they it's like they and like that's fine when, like, and, there that's, are different and that's chances. and that's fine but because because of the amount of variations there are though that's what causes a lot of things to get uh i guess you can say misconstrued but because like, we'll have hold well, on can we go back to what i was talking about i was getting there but you come that's no that's a completely different idea that's very much different no this is the what, exact same step sheet she is referencing it written this step sheet written by this choreographer no i know but that's what i was saying so you have people that will take a dance and if they don't like that part of the dance for whatever reason they'll change part of it yes so it's just like yes it's like okay i went a little bit too far with saying like completely different dances but that's where it's just like okay well you have one person do this dance so then this person makes that dance but then they don't like that dance so then they end up changing it again and now you have too many fucking variations so it's just like you have one and then all they do is change like one or two moves when they could have just went back to the original step sheet. And it's just like, and then you have us that would go back to like, I I've learned one way 
And then I go, I don't even go by the step sheet because this is the way that I was taught. So this is the way I'm going to teach it. And then you have people correcting me. And you realize, and that then the way you, you go back to wrong. step sheet and you're like, what the hell? Like, why, why do I do it differently than how it's actually written? Because that's mm-hmm. how I was taught. So like, even like taking into consideration, like I see like our flagship dance, yeah. the, the step sheets written differently than it's done anywhere else that i've seen mind you like i've seen people do aussie it's i mean it's not a huge variation it's not a huge variation but it's enough that like if you don't know what it is everyone's going to be doing something different yeah so like it's written as a walk right walk left walk right point toe left so i noticed our uh new intern did that and i almost asked where she learned it and i was just like Huh. But I forgot to ask after. because. But we... so that is the actual step sheet. The step sheet is a point to the left. And then when you walk back, instead of a touch like we do, right. it's actually a point to the right. Right. So for those of you who have never done it, one of the uh, Asi is basically um, not only is it part of our name, obviously, but it's uh, pretty much the most like the number one common dance, at least up north that we know of, because this song goes to like you could probably every single song that you can possibly think of and people think of like, Oh, well, does it go to this? Probably. Yeah. So we tend to teach this one a lot because it's, it's very much a go-to, but we do it differently than how it's, it's actually written. Variation. It's, it's a regional variation, which comes up to, again, you go somewhere where it's taught one way and then you go somewhere where it's taught a different way. And yes, it's a minuscule difference. So it's not like a big deal, but you go to, I mean, we go to like an hour away. And it's a different, completely different dance or like half you of it's the same. You have never taken me to that bar, mind you. I was actually just talking to Becca about that today. She goes, um, when are you bringing your butt up to Mishnah? When when we have or when down. we have time. We've been instructing almost every night. Well, she did recommend that to go on a, either a Monday or a Friday. And I told her it would probably be a Monday because I don't think we can cheat on our regular bar on a Friday. Yeah. So we can go on a Friday. So, we just have no, to make a plan. On a Monday. To do it. But. On a Monday. Um, but, not a Friday. But. but I, that's what I said. Did I, I say Friday? Did I say Friday? <laughs> yeah. I meant Monday. <laughs> I go, no. Whatever. Monday. But I'm going to warn you, like I said, I'm even talking to these people. The last time I went to this bar, which I've gone, I want to say three times now, mm-hmm. I knew one dance. That was it. I knew one. So and, that's, think, and, that's, and that's another thing that I want to bring. I think bring. that's, but that's also, okay, so, so, so going of, off of that though, you were saying like, because how many years ago was it when you, the last time you went? Was it pre-COVID? Um, no, it was because I went with my uh, one of my biker buddies, and I um oh my god I'm having a brain fart what his name is but I I met him there with um Anthony and someone else so it was relatively recent like maybe before, maybe like a it was before you knew me I think. It definitely was because otherwise you would have brought me. Because but you, still, you were, so we're only talking a couple of years. We're not talking like no, six, seven years. No, I get that. But like what I was getting at was now that tick, that's the one thing that TikTok has been good with, right? Is it's been showing the the variations from state to state with the line dancing. So like we're actually, it's actually kind of making it a little bit more consistent. Fuego being done the same way everywhere. Honky Tonk High or um, Honky Tonk Way. I, I guess you can say that is one of the benefits of the yeah. TikTok line dancing is as much as we kind of hate that the new school way to learn is, is on TikTok, but it's also doing what we kind of plan on doing, which is making it more regional wherever you go. More as nationwide the, versus, more, re- versus regional. Well, you know what I meant. Making it more nationwide, teaching the same dances because our, our game plan Long, long down the road from now in the future. Shh, don't give away our secrets yet. Don't do it. Okay. We just, we want more of the same no matter where we go. So the teach, the, the teaches. Yeah. Okay. The, Ooh, try again. Yeah. <laughs> Have another sip of wine. Try that I, again. I know. Like, wow, that, that's that a lot. That was not wine. Well, I, I said wine. Oh, you said wine? Yes. Okay. Hey, I'll take a sip of both. <laughs> right, maybe with a good time. Now I forgot what I was saying because you distracted me. Oh, so um, it would be it would be nice. <laughs> I'm sorry. Am that. I too loud? Yes. Yes, you are. So <laughs> what would be nice 
and I've talked to many people about this too, you know, say you're in a different state. We'll, we'll throw California in, whatever. Say you're from California. You want to come visit Massachusetts. You want to come visit Texas. You want to go visit whatever the hell state that you want to do because you've never done it before. And you want to go learn how to line dance or you want to, or you, you, know you already know dance. how to line dance. Sorry. You already know how to line dance and you want to go to a different state and, en- and enjoy, en- enjoy, and have a good time. enjoy the same dances and, just and, try out a new and bar. meet and meet new people and try a new bar. Versus going somewhere and not having a goddamn clue what the hell you're doing, like, and now you've and now you visit a yeah. bar and now you don't even want to sit in there for more than twenty minutes because you're like, cool, I don't know anything. Like well, that sucks. It was like so we went to Nashville and we knew one, one? dance. Uh, I think we knew Maybe two. two. I, well, no, 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 no. We they played a song that we knew. But it was, a, I think, it was, I, I think it was a different, different variation. Yes. Maybe I think I think half the song was the same, yes. but that was about it. So we went down. We paid our seven dollar. It was a seven dollar cover charge for each of us, and we went down to go support an old instructor that was from this area. Oh, now I, she thought, teaches I thought you meant the first bar that we went to, not the no, second one. No, 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 no. I'm talking about Nashville Palace. Okay. So we went down to Nashville Palace to go support Michelle. Yep. Go say hi, go see her, because you haven't you hadn't seen her in a while. Long since time. She, like since she had moved down. Yep. And she openly said to us, she goes, You're not gonna know a majority, any, of, the any of these dances. And then um Outlaw came on. And, and that was we were in the The only one we she goes, This is the only one you're gonna know because it's the same everywhere. Cause it so the song is called Whiskey Drinking. By Michael Knight. Whiskey drinking, son of a bitch. No. I said I'm a chain smoking, oh, whiskey drinking, whatever. son of a bitch. <laughs> Try again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm a whiskey drink. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was like, and that we didn't, that song didn't come on until we were probably there for 45 minutes. And don't get me wrong. Like there were other dances, like other songs that came on that we knew, but the dance floor was so packed with swing and a lack of dance etiquette it was that oh you, my that you God. couldn't get even attempt to get on the dance floor without getting kicked in the face now now mind you um for those of you who have never done stri- Which very swing de- before I've, I've, we- now that i'm thinking about it we have very much deviated from what we were originally talking about with dance etiquette what do you mean not really because it, it, it's, we're still on the same subject with that because if you talk about the the swing dancing at the same bar they were all over the place which, yeah. mind you, yes, with I guess you can say with that style, you can be all over the place. But I feel like you would want more organization, like kind of going in like a circle so, or staying in one spot versus just like so, you getting thrown left to right or back or forward. And you, you're going to end up like, I, I don't know how these people okay, don't run into so each other. What's so it was it's like a, they were doing like a swing mix with two steps. So for those of y'all who do know swing, you know, swing is a non moving dance. Like, you have a star pattern, but you're not, like, moving rotationally around the dance floor. Um, but two these step, people were moving. Two, can you let me fucking finish? That's- Rude. Two-step is a rotational step dance around the floor. So if you're combining two-step and swing, you're turning it into a rotation, but you're also doing a bunch of flips and turns and... um making it very hard for anyone to get around you because you don't because you can never predict what they're going to be doing next Two like if you do two step on its own people people who do two step it is a one one two one one two you know the foot potion you know the pattern you know the beat that they're going to based on the song that they're dancing to you start adding the swing stuff into it you have no idea because they're going to start spinning the girl one way flipping her and all that fun stuff but if you're doing that the flipping and the spinning as country swing, country swing, you are in your own little bubble. You're not rotationally moving. So you're staying in your like own little six foot circle. And so you can, you can navigate around that. The way line dancing is like dance floor etiquette is supposed to go. Your line dances when they're like singles, right? So you're standing in a line, you're doing your line dance that goes in the middle of the floor. Outside of that, there's a ring around them that will do the country swing. Because, like, yes, they are in their own little bubble, but they're not 
rotationally moving so they have like they have like designated little areas but around the line dancing so that they know they have to avoid the line dancers because they're going to be going in a certain direction and then two step where your rotational partner dances go around that that's the way it is supposed to go to make it a better and more enjoy enjoyable experience for all but it yeah. hasn't been happening no because everyone kind of just does their own thing. And on top of that, you go to for for all our, you know, people that do the swing two step, whatever the case is. And then you go to a line dance bar, which is fine. But, oh, you almost fucked up. Oh, bad. Um, and then you get people that start doing the swing, like kind of in the middle of the floor. That's fucking rude. Like you can do it, but like. Do it in the corner or do it like, like, you know, where like the actual couples dances yep. are on the outside. Don't be bringing your partner in the middle of the fucking the floor. The only time I actually understood that was when we were all doing El Paso on the outside or North Carolina. But that means that the center the outside, is actually the open. Center was open. That's fine. But when you're literally doing the, your dance and you're getting in the way of people. Yes. You should know dance etiquette by now. You already have experience with it. And that and that's the other thing. Nobody's teaching dance etiquette. I honestly made it a point. Like our number one rule that I wanted to make it a point when teaching and instructing, whatever, was dance etiquette. Mm -hmm. I make sure I point that out every single time we do it before we even start. The point where like yeah. ever everyone knows me. I'm 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 airplanes. She she likes to do a little, little, little Dep it depends wings. how many people we have in the room. Like if we can't go full airplane, we don't go full airplane, we go chicken wing. Um but another big okay. part of dance etiquette, which a lot of people are not doing, and as a female, I get it, it's terrifying to put your drink down. Do not bring a drink onto the dance floor. If oh, it drives me nuts. It so and that is solely for safety reasons. I could give two shits if you drop your own goddamn ten dollar drink. Like if you spent ten dollars on a drink and you spill it all over the floor, fine. That's your waste of money. But it's, it's that's not the point. It's, it's it's spilling it on the dance floor, and then you that part of the dance floor is now lost for however long of time because someone has to come. They have to go get someone to go clean it. They have to go get the cleaning supplies. They have to clean it. They have to dry it up. They have to do X, Y, Z. So you're losing that part of the dance floor for probably about half an hour. And then on top of that, you're spilling it on other people. You're getting in other people's way. It's that respecting your space and respecting those people around you. It's And then on top of that, um, when you're dancing, you're hopefully on a wood floor at a bar. Cause that's not always the case everywhere you go. Even some of the locations we have are not wood. Um, it's sticky. You, you have something that spills and then it's not cleaned up or like, hell, you go to places that do like concerts and stuff like that. And you got people all over the bars and stuff like that. And you spill something. The floor gets wicked sticky, mm -hmm. like very, very sticky. So if especially and you get a, a wrong spot, you go to you get do one. A turn. You get one spot and you're you're breaking your ankle. Not even your ankle. You're pulling your whole knee. Like it's if you're if your boot gets stuck while you're going to go do a spin. And you don't realize that you're in a sticky spot. You're, you're, you're locking your foot into the spot on you, where it is. And you're your going body for a is turn. already sent into your next step. But your foot and your knee are not moving with you. Yeah. Talk about it's, pain. It's going to be a massive injury. Yep. And then, you know, you have people the versus like the, the leather bottoms versus um, like the rubber, the rubber the bottoms wood. where the rubber sticks more than the leather. And I mean, that's a whole nother subject in itself. But. You would, depending on the type of boot you have, some have more grip and some are more more free. So that way you can spin a little harder, spin faster. And if you're accustomed to spinning something that's really fast because you have a, a leather sole and then you go for like a full, like a hard spin and your foot locks, well, there goes your leg. You're going down. Yep. Like we are comfortable. We are, we are, um, I don't want to say comfortable, but we are, uh, what's the word? Spoiled enough. For lack of a better, I know there was another word, privileged. We are privileged with the bar that we go to that we can trust to leave our drink and it will not get tampered with. It will not get touched. We can leave our drink at a table on the other side of the bar just because we want to go do a dance. And then we can go back to it and no one's going to take it. No one's going to mess with it. No one's going to put anything in it because at our bar, 
It's very with, safe. It's, it's very safe. It's very family oriented. And not saying like anyone under the age of 21 can come in. That's not that's not what I meant by family oriented. Family oriented oriented. Everyone's being, very like, friendly. Everyone is friendly. We take care of each other. Like if there's something sketchy going on, we will make sure that the anyone, whole bar finds out. The whole bar <laughs> will find out. The whole bar is on anyone's side. As, and they will. I, I don't want to say they'll make you feel uncomfortable, but they will make you uh, uh, aware it's not that them on not making the per, like the out. No, I don't want to say outsider because outsider is not the right every, term. Everyone's just keeping an eye on that one person. It's making that family member that we have, like the person, our regular, at, the regular at the bar, the person who is there all the time, making sure that they realize that they're safe. Yep. You might not know my name, but you know I'm going to make sure that you're safe. Yep. So, and I know not all bars are that that way. I get that. Most bars are. Um, we go out a lot, not, so we do have experience when it comes to that. No, they don't. No, they're no. not. Huh? No, most bars are not like that. That's what I just said. So, like, oh, I thought, thought you said they are. No, no I so, said we go out to a lot of bars, so we know they're not like that. Yeah, so most bars are not like that. And there are ways that you can go about it of protecting your drinks, protecting them in a way that um, you can feel comfortable leaving your drink unattended but knowing it's safe. Um, I'm actually going to get a number of those options and we'll do another video on that because I saw a newer option that just came out that I actually really like. Um, Care to share? Yeah, so they actually make stickers. Like, they're rolls of stickers that you can get and put them on top of your cup and your straw can go straight through it. A sticker? Like, it's like, it, it seals over your cup. You mean like a like a sc- Oh boy, like a uh, like a scrunchie almost. No, 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 no. It's I was gonna say because like they off of a sticker. I was gonna say because they actually they have, have the scrunchies. Yeah, they, yeah. They have scrunchies That's, and then they have just a regular like. Yes, but they have that. Those are expensive. These are a cheaper option. Like they I are. Feel like a sticker a wouldn't sticker. be good though because it doesn't. It, no, it's the sticker's big, so, flimsy. No, it's bigger than the cup. It's foil lined. Okay, so it's reusable. No. Why the fuck would you get something like that then if you can't reuse it? If you can reuse it, it means people can take it off your drink. So you have to carry like several of them around with no. you then? Bars have been buying them to hand out to patrons. Really? When they get a drink. Huh. Okay. To make girls feel more comfortable and more safe. That's new to me. Yes. It popped up on my TikTok. And now that we're talking about it, it'll probably <laughs> pop up again on it later. Welcome to iPhones. <laughs> <laughs> They're listening to us. So yeah. Um that's that's kind of like the majority of a spiel as far as um experience with uh that, no, that's just that's, going into the that's... dance etiquette side of things like knowing your limits knowing like no, where no, to stand no, knowing your limits knowing where to stand and using keep, your keep, goddamn keeping, brain keep it well you know nowadays not many people know how to do that unfortunately so it, that's that's a, a a whole nother uh aspect of teaching yeah. some people because you know I, and I and i get it like a lot of people go to different clubs and stuff like that and there's there's no respect because it's just kind of a free-for-all but like it, in this in the world of country dancing especially line dancing because that is what we do it is um, that's where we can give you our experience. that's where we can get a, give you our experience and our advice and uh hopefully listen if you don't you're going to find out the hard way, honestly. Um, Cause people it, will call you out. It won't just be the people that work there. It'll be the regulars that are there. And like, they'll, they'll look at you and be like, put your drink on the freaking table. Like that can't be on the, on the floor. Yeah. No. Or and, get out of my way or the, you will get pushed. You will get stepped on and you will not be happy, but it was your own goddamn fault. And like, if you're new to the scene too, and like you, you know, kind of like walk around, ask, ask someone like, like kind of like, like be friendly with people and be like, hey, like, is there is there something that I should need to know about this bar as far as like where I can dance, where I can practice, like who who will teach me, who's willing to teach me? So my my biggest thing is um I don't it's it's not a thing, but I'm trying to make it a thing. We call them pointers. So it's more I, of a thing than you think it is. So I've seen you can you'll see a lot of people doing it, but like there are people who will naturally like just point. So what a pointer basically is, there's two different types of uh, dancers on the floor. There's 
people that just want to do their own thing. And then there's pointers. So a pointer is basically someone where if you're new to line dancing and you hop on the floor and like you said, the one thing you're going to be doing is watching your feet because when it comes to line dancing, uh, 99.9% of the dance is your feet. You're not really doing a lot of hand or like upper body movements. So you're watching the person's feet and they're trying to, you're trying to copy you or now, vice versa. On. Before he goes any further, if you are new to line dancing, we know. Oh yeah. hundred percent. The people who are willing to teach you, we know, and we will go near you and help you. Yeah. If we, if it is a song we think is easy to teach. You, you guys kind of stick out like a sore thumb, so there's no hiding that. But um, when it comes to teaching, um, you follow a pointer. Don't follow someone who's not pointing because they're going to either do the dance how they want to do it or they're going to add their own flair, and then you're going to get all fucked you're gonna up. You're going to get all lost. You, you are, gonna you're literally going to get messed up, and then you're going to end up in someone else's way, and that's where the whole dance etiquette comes into play. So you go to you go up to someone – and you start copying them from a distance, please. And at least you, like five feet. Like we learned it during COVID. Like yeah. you knew how to give six feet during COVID. Give six feet on the dance floor. So you're going to see people using their fingers, their pointers, and they're going to say left, right, forward, back, whatever the case is. Those are the people that are actually willing to teach you. If they don't start pointing, they probably don't want to teach you because or they're, they're doing not their realizing own thing. you're there or or they're not realizing that you're there. But like we make it a point to be like, if I if I see someone trying and they're well, let me rephrase that. If they're getting in my way, I probably won't because I'm getting I'm just getting frustrated at this point. But if you're from a distance, like a respectable distance and I see you're trying to learn, I'm going to point. I'm going to be like, like if you're craning your neck behind you to see what I'm doing when we're on a different wall, I'm going to do what I can to help you. Right. And we're going to um, I just lost my train of thought now. Damn it, you suck. See, so you run, interrupt, you interrupted me now, and it fucked me up. Huh, how does it feel? Well, at least I didn't scream at you, ass. How does it feel? Feels great. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. So if you're if you're hopping on the floor, and we see you are at a respectable distance, and you're trying to learn, we're gonna. Oh, we're, that's what I was going to say. Not only do we point, we try to call it out, which, mind you, trying to call it out over loud music, not always going to work. Yeah. I mean, we have pretty loud voices. She's got an even louder voice than me half the time. Which is so why I was kind of surprised when you we, told we, me I had to eat the mic. I We were still testing these things out. I'm still Ooh, trying to figure it don't out. do that. Well, it's fine. It's just, no, it's that, little, that hurts. It's a, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Doesn't bother me. Anyways, all right, stop it. It's annoying. Yeah, we're, we're recording. So, um, but listen, I'll throw my phone at you. <laughs> Can you cut the shit? It's a drum roll. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, when you're on the floor, we're going to call it out. We're going to point. Those are the people you want to fall, fall, fall low. Ooh, yeah. how those words work for you there? Huh? Shut up. <laughs> um, otherwise, you know. If you if you're following one person and they're not doing it, go to, go to a, like another spot on the floor and and have them do it. You'll you you will eventually find someone who wants to teach you. I promise. Because or we will even openly be like, hey, this is not a dance that you're you're gonna pick up on this first go. Yeah, I will oh, teach oh, you we, it at another date. That you will 100 percent get those people that are like this is a hard song, so don't even try. And it's not that we're trying to be mean. It's literally if you have. No experience with it. Like watch from the sidelines for a little bit. If you think you got it after you're, a few walls, fine. Go yeah, for it. Go for it. I mean, you don't even have to listen to them, but we're just pre-warning you. You're going to get those people that say, don't even attempt this because you're not going to get it. Yep. But if you get it, you get it. Awesome. But at least we're warning you saying, this is a challenge. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you're doing. So don't expect to get it. Yep. That's their, that's the nice long way of saying, don't try it. Cause we'll, we'll even tell people when we go to the bar, when they're brand new, We'll be, we'll be like, oh, like we want to learn this. We'll be like, I will come grab you personally if it's an easy dance. If it's not an easy dance, I'm going to tell you, don't try it. You can try it, but don't try it. That's my recommendation. And we've had people where like, oh, this is a great song. And I look at them like, no, go sit, sit back down or enjoy like, enjoy the or, song. Yeah, enjoy the song or go on the sideline and try to follow me because chances. Do not jump to the middle of the floor. Yeah. Do not, because now not only you're going to get in my way, you're going to get in everyone else's way because you're trying so hard. And it might even be a dance where I don't want to teach it because I want to add my own flair to it. 
And then because I'm adding my own flair to it, not only are you going to not get the dance, you're not going to get the dance correctly. That's that's yep. the, like that's a very 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 big thing when it comes to learning it. You need to be you need careful to learn it who correctly. You... you need to learn it by the step sheet first, and then you can add. Because the other thing to is it. too that I, I was actually talking to someone, one of the people that we were teaching, um, they knew the dance correctly very well, but they um, they don't even want to teach it because they they add such a flair to it that they are now they don't even know the proper way to do it anymore. Because all they do is the flares. Richard? Nope. Um, oh, my God. I'm having a brain fart. Our, on one of our drafters, girls. Abby? No. Gwen? There you go. <laughs> I'm like, I know your name, but uh, uh, too many people. I'm having a brain fart. But, yes. So, she, phenomenal dancer. But we had the conversation on. I was, I was just like, oh, like if you ever like are interested in becoming an instructor, coming on with us, whatever the case is. And she's like, oh, like I know the dance is very well, but like I have done it this way for so long. I don't even remember the original steps which is, from the sheets. Which, again, we had to reteach ourselves a lot of them when we were first teaching. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We, There's so many dances that we so had many. to actually go back and learn because I did it my own way. And then we go back to the, the original step sheet and I'm like, Shit, I've been doing it wrong for the last like three years, but like there's, it, it it can't even say it's the wrong way because there's no official wrong way. Like you can't get in tr- you can't get in trouble you for doing it the wrong way. You just with, don't like, want flare. to. You just don't want to teach it the wrong way. That's the difference. Yeah, because I guess that's the other thing with like the step sheets is there's no one who's truly reviewing what you wrote. Yeah, like you're not going to get corrected for doing it wrong. You might get questioned on why you're doing it that way. Or like they might say like, hey, you do it differently than me. Where did you learn that? And they might say, oh, I learned it from a different instructor. Or they're going to say, I added my own flair because I thought this was cool and it just stuck. And this is all I do now. But then if you go back and be like, okay, well, just out of curiosity, remember the actual step sheet? And they're like, probably not. No, because they do it so often. Mm -hmm. Because so dancing is obviously muscle memory. So the more you do it, the more you're going to remember, well, if you do it differently than everyone else and you do it repeat repetitively, that's all you're going to remember. And you're not going to remember the original way. So what we've learned, at least what I've learned, is I do both. I will do the original how it's written way for at least the first two walls, at least. And then I'll add my flair after. Yep. And then I might even go back to the original way. Or I'll go and I'll start doing my flair even at the bar. And if I see people watching me, I'll go back to the original way so they don't get messed up because everyone else around me is doing it how they want to. And we're like, don't pay attention to this person or that person or that person. Watch me. Because if you watch everyone else, you're going to learn the wrong way. Learn how I do it first. Mm -hmm. When you get comfortable, when you can basically do the dance with your eyes closed, then follow them. Because now you know the difference. Not even following them, but that's when you can add your own style to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I said, there's no wrong way of doing it. There's a wrong way of teaching it, but there's no wrong way of doing it. Yes. hundred. There is 100% a wrong way of teaching. Um, so, like, we don't teach any of the dances with flair. We will None. teach afterwards. Like, after we've already taught them, we're like, hey, you could do this. You could, add, you could change your left grapevine into a rolling vine. That is perfectly fine if you are comfortable with doing that. If you are not comfortable with doing that, don't do it. The only time I feel like it's acceptable to change part of the song is if someone has a like physical inapt or injury, then I feel like it's yes. okay. Like the one thing, like the, um, well, like for, for the, example, the, like it I says think it was the half, half turns. Pivots. Yeah. So if you do a right half turn, right half turn, so you end up back on the same wall. You're just doing a half pivot and a half pivot. But it's a lot of ankle and knee motion. So yeah, it's a lot of that twisting of the knee motion you can replace that with a rocking chair it's the same count it's still a one two three four one two three four or if you can do it correctly within the pace you can just kind of do like steps or stomps so like in in the spot like one two three four because you can't even just maybe doing a rocking chair like maybe you have like a bad knee or something like that and you're not trying to over exert or, I mean, you can do small steps, too, because we try to teach people that small steps are better, especially with a faster song. Because yes. if you if you overstep with a fast song, you're going to get off You're pace. probably going to end up in a split. Yeah. 
<laughs> so there's yes yeah, so there's a lot of modifications as well so before we go any further into all of this because we could talk about this for hours we are already at 55 minutes oh shit and um it's after 9 p.m and i want to go to bed okay yeah so we're already past our limit but this was our our first uh first attempt um we're aiming for wednesday nights to be filming doesn't mean that's when they will be posted yes so. This is going to be a lot of I'm, I'm trial error practice. We are going to be filming on Wednesdays and then posting probably on Thursdays. Depending on how long it takes me to edit a video or if I feel like it's just good enough just to post the whole thing. But I feel like trying to post uh, an hour long video might take forever. So I think in an ideal world, I, I'm going to talk to him off camera about this because I have an idea that we don't need to bother your time with um so with that good night y'all thanks for uh joining us for our first uh boots and brews podcast thanks for watching guys i hope that we were entertaining good night y'all